Okay, so today we are taking an in-depth look at the video equations euro here. Previously the video equations was a standalone video synth. It looked like this. Got some snazzy jacks there. But I have converted it to Eurorack format and it has a lovely glitter black acrylic and stained bamboo ply front panel. We're coming out of the composite video RCA jack here into our display screen here. Uh, you'll notice that colors like white will look a bit blown out on the image. That's just the camera. We're going to have a direct feed a little bit later. Um, so you'll get to see the um, a more detailed view or higher quality. But I wanted to use this view to sort of walk through uh, the different features on the front. So all these knobs have CV controls that correspond to them. It's a bit hard to see in the video, but uh, the wood has been engraved to tell you what each of those are. And they'll be engraved. There are engravings here. So we use this to select the equation. You can see we're starting. We're getting different. We're getting different content here. Then over here we have offset. So I can pick, I can now offset the color and the characters that are being used. So there's a lot of potential to change the appearance. I'll get to this button down here a little bit later. Uh, over here we've got masks. So here I am bringing in a smaller square mask. And I can invert that mask. So now I'm cutting a hole and we can step through a couple of different masks. We've got square, we've got blinds, so this cuts from left to right. We also have diamond, maybe I'll select a slightly, yeah, slightly fuller equation. So we have a diamond that we're able to scale here. All of those can invert. This is multi-equation mode, so now we're running a separate equation on top as compared to the bottom, and that equation is selected with the radius knob here. You can see the two equations there, and invert will flip that. We also have me, we also have the tower mask. So that creates a diamond mask that extends off the bottom. And then we also have a threshold mask. So this one, here we go. So this one is now eating away at the lower values in the equation. And of course, I can invert that as well to flip how that eating away works. Now coming back to this button down here and the offset column, we can apply an offset now to the mask. And so the stuff that we've masked out, we can now change the color and character of we get something that we like. That's pretty nice. Now over here we've got three controls and these three controls affect the equation. So the first one we have is mod 2 down here. So you'll notice we're shifting these boxes up and down with mod 2. Uh, what mod 1 up here and mod 2 do will be affected by what equation you're in. So in this particular one, I'll turn off the mask so we get a bit of a better vibe, and I'll turn off the offset. So as mod 2, sorry mod 1, allows me to shift these patterns up and down, and mod 2 kind of changes the appearance and complexity of these patterns. And now here we have modulo. So modulo lets us control color depth. 
So when modulo is pulled all the way in one direction, we've got as few colors as possible and as few symbols as possible. And as we start to turn it, now we've got two, coming up to a few more, a few more, a few more, a few more, until all the way at the other end, we have the maximum possible colors. Wow, look at your great green there. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Uh, the other kind of thing, controls that we have on this are character offset. So this offsets our characters by about 60. There's a few hundred different characters in here that all have a few, uh, they have a few different styles. So with nothing selected, I'll grab an equation where it's a bit more obvious. And I'll turn off my offsets. So you can see this pattern is being built out of ASCII characters and also uh, inverted ASCII characters. So when I press this once, we've maintained some of those ASCII characters, but now we have some more abstract symbols. I'll press it again. We've got some solid blocks, uh, some more noisy, abstracty sort of symbols. And I'll press it again. And now we're getting into... Uh, another complex set of shapes. We've offset lots of lines and dots. And then once again, back to the beginning. Other features we've got is mute, allowing you to blank the screen. Uh, over here, we have page and mode. So here, we've been looking through the equations on page one. I click here we can now go to see what's happening on page two so page two has some nice fast equations it's got some uh, character locked equations so by character locked I mean uh, they're all solid colors it maintains a nice graphic pattern Let's move it across, see what's happening here. What have we got here? Oh yeah. This is a tessellating pattern equation. Where the uh, scale of the repeated boxes is controlled by the modulo. kind of triangle stuff. Not a dirty, messy version of that. What was that? <laughs> and again, all of these can have masks and offsets and character offsets applied to them. Something else that we want to take a look at are the options under mode. So if I click mode the first time, the LED will start to flash. And now that has put an offset LFO has been turned on. So if I turn on this, you'll notice that our offset is changing around the values we've selected here. So that creates even more motion and movement in the pattern. Now I've clicked it again. Let's see. And there we go. So I've clicked it again. And it's returns taken us out of the LFO. I've clicked it again. And now we are in frame stop mode. So modulo 1, when modulo 1 is low, the frame is paused. And as modulo 1 increases, the video is allowed to advance. So that is a very simple way of being able to synchronize changes in your visuals to, say, a BPM or a clock signal. It just needs to be uh, over 2 volts. And then the frame will advance. Now if we press it again, 
we've moved on to update by line. Turn off that offset. So you can see we're updating by line. And with that offset turned on, we're getting some nice kind of sweeping. And now if we press it again, we're updating by character. So instead of updating by line, we're updating individual cells by character. And changes that we make reflect that change over time. So I'm just going to have a super quick uh, play around. There's a lot of kind of weird uh, glitchy sort of stuff you can get, especially on the second page. So you can buy this from me currently, uh, I'm currently doing a run of these beautiful units at the moment. They are available like this or for an extra fee you can have a built-in screen. Uh, it will most likely be a slightly smaller one than this because this is quite a large screen uh, and it will be built directly into the panel and wired directly from the video jack. Mm -hmm. But there will also be uh, an external RCA input, so you can also use it as a monitor for other video content. It, uh, it's available uh, with both PAL and NTSC chips. Um, unfortunately, it can't do both PAL and NTSC uh, simultaneously. There's a small chip on the back that you just swap out to change your video format. Awesome.